Last time, we got started on this fantastic little craftsman table, a real piece of furniture that's in a friend's house, and she uses it every day, so I know it's gonna make a great project for a beginner or intermediate woodworker. You don't need a ton of wood, it's approachable, and it's a great way to build some skills. Last week, we picked our material, cross-cut it into manageable sections, ripped out the legs and stretchers, glued up the top, planed everything, chamfered the ends, and generally got ready for joinery. And that's what we're going to dive right into this week, the joinery. With these stretchers, I'm going to join them together with a having joint. So they're going to sink into one another and then be flush on both sides. The joint is very easy to cut, but the layout is important. So you can see what I've done here. I have a pair of crosses right in the middle. I found the midpoint of the length just using a tape measure and the midpoint of the width just using a marking gauge. And then I darkened those lines a little bit with pencil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one on top of this one, and I've actually carried those width lines down the edge just a little bit. That makes it super simple to put the pieces together and line those marks up. And even that right there is pretty close to perfect. And it doesn't have to be because I'm gonna bring in this inexpensive C-clamp uh, you could use a squeeze clamp for this too. Anything that gives you light pressure and tighten it up until it's medium snug and then I can tap adjust. So I'm gonna tap that piece over. That looks better visually. And then I'll test it again with my bench square. And uh, I went too far that time. You do have to take a minute to get this just right. There, that is now perfectly square, and I'm ready to lay the joint out. And with the pieces clamped squarely in place, I can trace them with my marking knife, rotate and trace the other side. Now you see the way I have my knife angled here. I'm not straight up and down. I'd like my markings to be as tight as possible. I can always plane this piece a tiny bit to get it to fit, but if I have a loose fit, there's not a lot I can do about that. And then it's a bit awkward because of the clamp, but I'm gonna do the same thing on the other piece. So now my joint is marked on both pieces. I can get rid of this C-clamp and continue to lay it out. Now I've used my knife and my square to deepen the cuts that I just made, so they're really easy to see. And now I'm gonna continue those down the sides of the piece. So I'm gonna put my square against my piece like this, put my knife right in the corner of that knife line I already created, slide my square up to it, and then I can use that to deepen my lines. I can take these lines as far down the piece as I want to. It doesn't matter because the, these layout lines are gonna be hidden inside the completed joint. So there's nothing to overrun here. And then, once I've knifed my lines down on both sides, I'm gonna take my marking gauge, which I've set to half the piece, and this I'm gonna be much more careful with. I don't wanna overrun my layout lines. So I'll start on one line, and I'll work over to the second one, and then just stop. A little overrun doesn't matter, but I don't want the work to look sloppy, so I'm gonna be precise. And it might not be easy to see here on camera, but now I have two lines down and my marking gauge line, which gives me my depth. And all I have to do is remove the wood in between these lines. A lot of folks don't make their knife walls big enough or deep enough. And this was a flaw I had with my work for years. You can do a super tiny one, but your saw is not really gonna register in that. After you've taken out a little bit of waste, move the chisel back more and bring it in a second time. That's a deep knife wall that I can really feel with my finger. That's gonna register a saw really effectively. This is a shallow cut, so a dovetail saw is gonna be easy to control. I'm gonna get it right in that knife line, and it's easier generally to draw back to get started, but you don't have to. Stop and double check, nice and square, and I'm gonna go down that line. 
And the line I gauge down here is a depth line. It lets me know when to stop. And then, of course, I just need to repeat. And with the shoulders cut, I'm going to add some relief lines in between them. Now the waist is going to be really weak when I go to remove it. And then to remove the waist, I'm going to take a half inch chisel. I'm going to go bevel up about halfway into the waist and give it a tap. Same thing again. And then we broke out to the other side, but because I only went halfway down, I didn't break out all the way down to my layout line. I'm still safely above my margin. That's why I don't try to take out all the waste at once. As long as I'm over here, let's flip this around and get the rest of the waste out of this far side. Again, halfway. And then the waste in the middle, you're pretty free to work on. Rotate again and work from that first side where we started. Oak is chippy and you don't wanna take chances. So don't try to take too big of a bite and you probably won't get a bad surprise. Light taps, good. Very close to my layout line here on this side. I'm gonna make sure I'm equally close to my layout line here on the other side. And that's gonna give me the freedom to remove that waste in the middle. Good. Now I'm pretty close to my layout lines and I can take that middle waste out. Just a few cuts, and now I'm gonna work down to my line. No need for a chisel with that. I'm gonna go two-handed, and I'm gonna do a slicing cut a bit sideways. You can see these shavings curling up because I'm slicing with the grain. And I'm gonna work down right there till I get right onto my layout line. And don't go too far. And then we'll rotate and do the same thing. Now I'm very close to my lines on the front and the back. There's just a bit of waste in the middle and there might be enough to actually use a chisel. That is better in this oak. Still light, gentle taps. And now there's a bit of final pairing to get right down to those lines. Very fine shavings here until the base is flat and even with my layout lines. Now with both the joints cut, the two pieces do not fit together. And this might seem surprising, but this is exactly what I'm going for. It's great when your joints can fit straight off the saw, but a lot of us don't saw that accurately. So the best thing to do is undersize your joints just a tiny bit and then trim them a little bit to fit. So what I'm gonna do is just plane one of these pieces just a little, and I think they're gonna fit together just perfectly. Now, this is my first time using my jack plane today, and I'm not gonna put this plane right on the wood for my project, because who knows what kind of shaving it's taking. I've got a scrap of white pine here in the vise, and I'm gonna take a shaving off that white pine, and this is what I'm looking for, and especially down here where the board is nice and wide, it's a full width shaving. So this plane is set for a nice medium light cut and the lateral adjustment is good. It's terrible to take a plane out of your tool chest, put it straight on the work, find that it's incorrectly set and ruin a piece. So don't do that. Test your plane when you take it out of the chest. And this is the surface that I wanna trim and I'm gonna take a light shaving off it. And that right there could be enough. Let's see what happens. So I can, if I'm pushing firmly, I can feel that the pieces are almost going together. They want to, but we're not quite there yet. And after a couple more shavings, the pieces are just about to go together. Oh, you know what? Yeah, it's a tight fit, but there they go.
So I thought I was gonna have to take another shaving, but it turns out I don't need to. There's my having joint. It needs just a little bit of fine tuning, but it's just about perfect, nice and tight all around. And I just have to adjust the bottom of one of them because I have a little bit of unevenness here. That's gonna take just a tiny bit of chiseling and then this piece is gonna be done and I can move on to working on the legs. Now that my stretchers are joined together by this having joint, I wanna lay out where the legs are going to join the stretchers. And what I've done is taken my leg stock and put them back together so that that face mark, that F, is visible and lined up. That means they're all pointing in the same direction. The grain's all pointing in the same direction. Keeping that consistent all the way around the piece is gonna make it look a lot neater, more, I don't know, unified, I guess. So I'm gonna take each one of those legs and I'm gonna put the face mark to the left, it's just easy for me to remember, and carry that around the circle. When I also looked at both sides of my half-lapped stretchers, and I picked the side that looked the best and wrote top across it. That way I'm going to be able to remember which one the top is for the rest of this build. Now that I like the way this looks and all the grain is pointing in the same direction, I'm gonna write A, B, C, D around these pieces, and then I'm ready to start cutting the joinery to put this together. On the original piece, the stretchers are joined to the legs with just kind of a butt joint like this and a screw going through the leg and into the end grain of the stretcher. And the table's held together for decades, so there's no problem with that. But as those screws loosen up over time, you can imagine, there's a little bit of twisting. The piece isn't as solid as it could be. So we're gonna replace that screw joint all along the bottom of the piece with something that's a little bit stronger but still approachable. Several weeks ago, I did a whole video on different variations of the half lap joint, and I think that's perfect for a table like this. Plenty strong enough and pretty easy to cut. For the plans, we're gonna show a plain straight half lap that's really easy to execute, but here in the video, I'm gonna do a dovetailed half lap. It's only a tiny bit harder to do and it looks a lot cooler. And just like any joint, a good dovetailed half lap starts with good layout. I'll lay out the joint on the stretcher first. This is the stretcher that I have labeled B and then this is the leg that's labeled B. So I know that they're gonna go together in this orientation. When I was setting the stretchers and the legs together, I put a little X right here that's to let me know that I'm gonna remove the wood on this half of the end and keep this half. It's easy to get confused. My marking gauge is still set to half the thickness of my material and it's gonna let me mark all the way around for my cut line. Really useful to do this off the end of the bench. I'm gonna set the corner of my work into the bench to hold it, use my marking gauge against that reference surface and push forward lightly. You can see the gauge isn't hitting the bench even though I'm using a small piece of wood. Now, to go across that end grain, which can be quite difficult, I'm gonna go off the end of the bench, hold the piece down firmly, and strike across that end grain. It's actually really easy and I'm not fighting the work. Then, I'll pick the piece up and rotate it and strike my final line, holding it underneath like this. Now I've got a cut line that goes all the way around the end. The next thing I need to do is get my shoulder. That tells me how deep the joint is going to be. So here's my leg marked B, and here's my stretcher. And what I'm gonna do is just lay, yep, this is my X, so here's where I'm taking material away. I'm gonna lay the stretcher on top of my leg, just like this, feel for flush with my finger, and yep, that's perfect. And then using my knife, just make one little knife prick right there, just enough for me to see it. Then I can bring in my square, set my knife into that little mark I just made, slide the square up and strike a couple of lines. And that's gonna be the shoulder of my joint. The only thing left to do is connect it to my gauge lines, so I'll rotate the piece set my knife into that shoulder line, connect it to that gauge line, 
and then rotate the piece again. Same thing. Pick up my shoulder line with the knife, slide the square up, and connect it. I can see these lines pretty clearly, but you probably can't. So let's darken them in with a bit of pencil. This is the gauge line that I just made, and I'm going to saw it down this line. And then here's my shoulder line. It continues across here and continues here. And I've already put an X here, and I'll add X's to the other surfaces. So when I go to saw and cut this joint, there's no confusion about which wood is going and which wood is staying. Over at the vise, this stretcher is really easy to hold because it's small. I can get it right next to the screw, and it's in a very convenient position. Convenient, but not straight. There we go. This is a small rip cut, so the dovetail saw is really the best choice, and I'm going to favor the inside of my line just a tiny bit so that my cut is in my waist, pull back to get started, nibble across the top of the piece. And now that I've got a good kerf, I'll carry the rip cut down to my shoulder line. Now I need to cut that shoulder, and I've knifed it well, so this is a great opportunity to turn it into a knife line. You don't have to, but this part of the joint is going to be on full display, and making a knife wall here is going to help create a really crisp join with the leg. I do have to be on a slight angle to use the vise. You could also use bench hooks for this, and I like to drag the saw into the knife line and make sure that knife wall is deep enough to grab my saw. That gives me, that gives me confidence that I'm going to get a clean cut. There we go. You would expect a piece like this to need a little bit of light trimming to clean up that saw mark, and this piece just needs a little light trimming. One inch chisel is perfect for this. Just taking away any material that's proud of those layout lines, and then I can get in here, and cut a little bit of material away. Right here in the corner, you can undercut a tiny bit, and that can help the joint come together more cleanly. Just don't blow out this far edge with the chisel. Be very careful as you come out on the far end. And that's all trimmed. We're ready to turn this into a dovetailed half lap. If you're going to cut a regular straight half lap joint, you're already done, and this is ready to be joined to the leg. But if we want to turn this into a dovetailed half lap, we just have to add one angled line. It's really easy. You can see that I took the shoulder I cut before and just took a pencil and my square and extended that shoulder line around to the next face. And now I'm going to lay out that angled line. So just using the ruler on my square, I'm going to go an eighth of an inch in on the top and give myself a little tick mark. I'll explain why we're doing that in just a second. And then I'm going to reset my square for five sixteenths of an inch. This is not a critical measurement. You can sort of pick a measurement that you like, but I think this gives a pleasing angle. And then all I need to do is connect those two tick marks together with the rule on my square. Just like that. And then I'll put the piece in my vise, and I'm going to connect my cut line across the top. Just like that. In the vise, I'm going to connect that angled line up over the top, and you can see why we went in an eighth of an inch. If I wanted to cut this right on the corner, that would be a nightmare. Coming in an eighth of an inch just gives me a super easy place to start that saw. I'll start it straight up and down. Mm -hmm. 
when I have a nice clean kerf, then I'll angle it and follow my line all the way down to the bass. <laughs> And now again, I have a shoulder to cut, and I think we'll do a knife wall on this. There's no reason not to. And this shoulder cut is a short cross cut. That's it. That's a dovetail half lap. Now we're going to install this into our leg. Now that we have the joint cut on the end of the stretcher, we need to trace this onto the leg and cut out the recess. And that's not too tough. You can see here on the leg, I've created a baseline two inches up from the bottom. And that's what the bottom of the joint is going to register on. I can use my joint itself a lot like a square put my knife in my baseline, slide the joint up to it, and double check to make sure it's in the right location. There we go, nice tight fit, and I'm pressing down firmly. Now that I have the joint in the correct place, I'm just gonna reach inside and trace that angled surface I just sawed. And after a couple of strokes, that's my joint transferred onto my leg stock and I need to know how deep to go. My marking gauge is still set to half the thickness of my stock, so I'm gonna use my marking gauge to create one depth line on one side and one depth line on the other. And then the only thing to do is transfer my lines across, and since they're knife lines, that's easy. I can sneak the line, sneak the knife right into the line, move my square up, and connect those face lines down to the depth line that I just made with my marking gauge. And now my layout is complete, and all I have to do is remove this material, and the joint will be ready for assembly. So I've darkened in my layout lines with a pencil. You can see what I'm gonna remove, and I've already turned these two top lines into knife walls, so they'll guide my saw. I'm gonna put it level in my vise and go ahead and saw down those two top lines. There's my two vertical cuts down to my baseline now I just need to remove this material here, but if I try to chisel it out whole, I'm gonna get breakout, it's gonna be really bad. So I need to saw in some relief cuts to break up this waste and make it easier to chip out. And here, as I'm finishing up my relief cuts, I'm just following the angle of that dovetail line so that the cuts break the waste up evenly. To remove that waste, I'm going to go bevel up, put the chisel about halfway down in the waste, get the chisel handle down, and tap it gently. Good. Now you can see this piece here broke out to the other side, but because I have a well-defined baseline on the other side, it didn't ruin things. Most woods are unpredictable. Oak is especially unpredictable. So I'm going to keep working closer to my baselines, and then let's flip it around. And yeah, I have no trouble here. That piece did break out, but it broke out above my baseline. So that's not going to give me any trouble. Since I've knocked out the waste on the far side, I can be a bit more aggressive with this one. And now that I have a lot of the waste removed on both sides, I can take out what's in the middle pretty aggressively. 
To finish, I'm trimming down to the base of my joint. No mallet necessary, I'm just using this two-handed stabbing technique for more control and to take the wood off in small chunks. And now the joint goes together pretty cleanly. It took a little bit of trimming, especially in the base of the socket here, but you can see with firm pressure, I get a nice tight fit. There's a little darkness here from the pencil line, but I don't think there's any gap and a little bit of clamp and glue, and this is gonna be a clean and attractive joint. And of course now, I just have to cut it three more times and the structure of the table will be finished. Okay, so now I've done all four joints and I've got a pair of U-shaped assemblies like this that I'll be able to join by gluing up the halving joint in the middle of the stretchers. So my undercarriage is ready for glue up, but before I do that, I'm gonna disassemble all of these pieces, scrape all my surfaces, get rid of my pencil lines, get rid of my layout lines, double check my chamfers, and make sure everything looks great because it's a lot easier to do now than after it's glued together. Now is the time to make this piece look really clean. Now the glue up for this piece does have a couple of challenges. It's not too complicated, but the main thing is that I dry clamped it. So I put this assembly together with clamps and no glue, and that made it much easier to sort of plan out all my moves. So a couple things we're trying to do. We wanna get each of these joints clamped individually, and I'm doing that with C clamps, and I put a little padding and blue tape on there. That way, the clamps won't stick to the glue, and they'll come off cleanly, which is really important. That's gonna press those half-lap dovetails straight into the sockets on the legs. And of course, I'm getting some glue squeeze out, which is something that I very much want. Next, I wanna make sure my shoulders on the bottoms of the joint here, I want these shoulders to come in nice and tight against the stretcher. And this definitely isn't necessary, but it's helpful. I'm gonna add a bar clamp to the outside. And if you wanna do this whole build with just a couple of little C-clamps, you totally can. Use that bench clamp that I showed in part one, and you could use that to apply a little pressure to the inside here and I'm just seeing those shoulders close up a tiny bit. It's not a big deal, but it'll make a little difference in the final piece. Now what I found from dry clamping this is applying all of this pressure on the bottom makes the assembly splay open a little bit. So if I measure down at the bottom here, and then I measure at the top of the assembly, it's bigger by almost a quarter inch, and it's gonna dry that way if I don't do anything about it. So I've already set up a second bar clamp, I'm gonna put it over here, and it's hardly any pressure. I just have to turn that screw a tiny bit. Just like that. Check it again. Still too much. And that's right on the money. Now the measurement at the bottom and the measurement at the top are exactly the same. So now I know I have a square assembly, but let's double check. I've set up my little combination square to check my assembly and nice. Flip it, and come on over here, and I like that one as well. Now, of course, the big challenge is I have to put it down and leave it alone for at least a half hour while that glue sets up, and then I'll glue together the other assembly. And once your two leg assemblies are completed, you can join them together at the halving joint in the stretchers. And you can just use a single little C-clamp for that. 
and I got a nice tight fit on my joint so that glue dried really quickly and the undercarriage for my table is complete. Now, when we started this little craftsman table build, it was supposed to be a single video, but I also wanted to do things in a slower, more detailed, more live on camera way so I could show more techniques. And that's working out great, except the videos are long. This video is long enough. We're gonna cut it here and come back to you next time with the last part of the project, making the round top. And we're gonna make a perfectly round top without using a bandsaw, a turning saw, a coping saw. We're just gonna use common, inexpensive tools, and that top is still going to be perfectly round and beautiful. And I know it is because <laughs> I already made it. It came out great. So join us next time where we're gonna show you how to make this top, add the cleat, do the notches, put the table together, and do all the final finishing touches. That video is already shot, and I promise the, the table looks great when it's done. That's gonna be in two weeks. Next week, we're releasing the new product from my company, Compass Rose Toolworks. And it's not just gonna be a commercial where we show you our new thing. We're actually gonna show you how you can make our new tool using some scrap wood and some common inexpensive tools because that's a really good approach to being in the physical product business. Show people how to make your stuff so they don't have to buy it from you. We are commercial geniuses. So <laughs> I promise it'll be a lot of fun and really interesting. So next week is the new product from Compass Rose. Two weeks from now, we'll finish up the surprisingly epic craftsman table build patreon.com slash rex kruger get longer videos behind the scenes stuff free plans an amazing community of artisans it's a lot of stuff and it's only five dollars a month and i say it every time but i really mean it thanks for watching